So for um, for number 39, we want to um, rotate the area bounded between these two curves about the x-axis. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn them. Um, the red curve is a hyperbola, a little bit different than what we're used to working with, and the blue curve is just y is equal to 2. Um, the area between them is shaded in yellow, so the first thing that I have to do is I have to find these points right here, which is where they're going to intersect, right? So I have that y is equal to 2, and I have the other curve that y squared minus x squared is equal to 1. So I'm going to plug in 2 here, um, so then I'm going to have 2 squared minus x squared is equal to 1, therefore I'm going to have um, 4 minus 1 is equal to x squared, and so x is equal to plus or minus square root of 3, right? Um, and so this is on my x-axis here, this is negative root 3, uh, comma 2, and then this over here is positive root 3, comma 2, okay. So once we have these boundaries, let's think about what happens when we rotate this area about the x-axis. Um, since we're only, we only need the upper part of the parabola, the lower part's not relevant, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that from our drawing so it doesn't get too crowded. Okay, and so when we revolve it, we're going to end up with a bunch of rings. Um, the lower part is going to touch the red curve and the upper part is going to touch the blue curve, right? And so we're going to... Um, we are going to add these rings, like so, horizontally. We're going to sum them up, and when we sum them up, we're going to get a volume, right? Think of stacking these rings um, horizontally. So we have here that our volume is going to be the integral from negative root 3 to positive root 3 of ax dx. And the reason that it is um, ax dx is because each of these rings, they have an area, right? And so our area is going to be all this stuff right here. And it is a dx because we're stacking them up horizontally. So let's think about, and actually, am I going to color that in so it looks a little bit better? So let's think about what this ring here is going to be. Well, this ring is going to be the area of the outer ring, right? So we're going to have an outer ring that goes like this, or an outer disk, I should say. And then from it, we're going to subtract the smaller disk. So if I subtract a smaller disk, I'm going to be left with just the area of the ring, which is what I want. So we're going to say that the outer disk has radius here, R1, and the smallest disk has radius R2. So my AX that I want is going to be... Um, pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared, right? Because the outer one is going to be pi r1 squared, um, and the smaller one is going to be pi r2 squared. Okay, so all we have to do now is to figure out what um, r1 and what r2, what they are, right? So we can see here that the outer radius, r1, is going to go from 0 all the way out to 2. And regardless where I'm at on my x-axis is always going to go from 0 all the way out to 2. Therefore, my area is going to be pi uh, times 2 squared for my r1 minus pi. Now, what's my r2 squared? My r2 is going to go from the center all the way out to where it touches the red curve, right? That is going to be my smallest radius. And so we have to be able to express that um, in, as a function of x. Now, this parabola here, y, sorry, this hyperbola, this is not a function of x, right? We have to turn it into a function of x. And how do we do that? We isolate the y. So we have that y squared is equal to x, um, sorry, I'm going to bring the x to the other side, so 1 plus x squared, and therefore y is equal to 1 plus x squared. Technically, this is plus or minus, but we're going to choose the positive root because that's the positive side, right? If I had chosen the negative root, that would have been the negative part of the um, hyperbola that goes down, and that is not part of our graph here. So we're just going to take the positive root, and so it's going to be, this is going to be our r2, right? Wherever it touches it. So we're going to go square root of 1 plus x squared and all of this squared. 
Um, so once we have this, let's just simplify it. We have pi, I'm going to put that outside, so that gives me 4 minus this square root, it cancels out with the root, so 1 plus x squared, which is equal to pi times 4 minus 1, that gives us 3 minus x squared. Um, and so this is the, um, the expression for my area, right? This th pi times 3 minus x squared, it's going to give me the ring at any value of x, like if I put it at x is equal to 1, um, it's going to give me the area of the ring at it. And so if I sum up all these rings, I'm going to get a volume, right? So I'm going to sum up. Um, it's going to be pi. I'm going to put that outside. And then that gives me 3 minus x squared and all of this times dx. Um, now, notice that this is symmetrical, right? Um, from 0 to root 3 is twice from negative root 3 to positive root 3. So instead of going from negative root 3, I can just go from 0 and double it. So that's what I'm going to do. V is equal to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to root 3 of 3 minus um, x squared, and all of this times dx. And once more, I did twice from 0 to root 3 um, because this section right here is... Uh, 2 times the section here is going to be the whole the whole um, area, right? And so now all I have to do is I have to integrate it. So this is 2 pi times 3x minus x cubed over 3, and all this evaluated from 0 to root 3, which is equal to 2 pi times, we don't need to worry about 0 because that just disappears, um, we're just plugging in root 3. 3 root 3 and then minus... Um, root 3 to the power of 3 over 3, which is equal to, let's see, uh, this is going to be 2 pi times 3 root 3, and I want to put um, root 3 cubed divided by 3, that is just going to give me minus root 3. Um, and let me see if we're doing okay, yeah, we are. And so this is going to give me 2 pi 3 root 3 minus root 3 is just going to give me 2 root 3, and therefore the answer is going to be um, 4 pi times root 3. And so that's my volume when I take um, the area between these two curves, and I rotate it about the x-axis.